Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're going to be unlocking the Twilight Forest and hopefully getting ourselves the ability to go a little bit higher than our current base. So, I hope you guys are ready. So today I want to figure out how am I going to get things automated? How am I going to automate sieving? I really want to get away from manual sieving. So, I've come up with some sort of an idea. Right here, we have our smeltery. I didn't move it from over here expanded it a little bit and we have now more storage in here which is great but i need to automate this um, in a particular way and i think using a crafter hooked up to this is going to work so i've already made a crafter i've already made a pattern grid i've got a couple of patterns in here and we basically need to craft this we need to craft these materials and you can see right here i kind of know the the numbers it's 25 leaves and then uh 10 and then clay um, now, it could be any leaves, so I don't want to make it exact, and I don't I don't know if it will be exact. Um, we could go with a, with a particular type of tree that does produce leaves. We could go with oak. We can set up a system that um, like filters and only puts oak out, and we can get a lot of the a lot of oak from that. But let's go ahead and uh, just kind of do do this process. So let's go to processing here. I have my crafter set up, um, and let's see oak leaves. All right. Actually, you know what? We might be able to find the uh, the recipe for this. Overworld matter. Right here. Um, let's see. How many? How much does it actually produce? It produced twenty blocks. So that's a that's important information that I need to know. Um, so let's go ahead and make this a result. And then I believe you hit shift, not shift. Yeah, I think it's shift. You have shift. Nope. I have to click on it. Right there. We go. I have to <laughs> right click on it. We can set this to twenty. So that's what we need. We need to know that 25 oak leaves. So let's set this there and we'll knock this down to 25 uh, oak leaves. And then we need 10. It should be one tin. This is the recipe for that. And then one clay, right? So we should set up clay and we need clay to be in ball form. And that needs to be set to one. So we can do it this way. Um, this way could work. We could also use, um, like, I believe we can go up and we can do a hundred leaves, a hundred total leaves, and then do four, 10 and a block of clay. That could also work. Um, manually by hand, I've been doing it by fifties because it just makes it easier. But with it in here, like this is no problem. This, this is pretty simple. Let's go ahead and create this process. Okay. So with the crafter, we're also going to need an importer. So I'm going to need an import. Um, I don't know if I have all the stuff for this. Let's see, do I have it? Yes, I do. Perfect. So that is going to allow us to pull the items out. Awesome. So how am I going to get this over here? Um, well, I guess I'm just going to utilize this cable here. That's popping out from underneath and I'm just going to have to run that through this wall down under everything. Yeah, that's that's going to be what happens. Um, speaking of cable, I think I am out of the material. I did have it processing though. So I can hop over here and grab all of that. There we go. And now we can have a few more cables. Perfect. So let's set this up. This is uh, this is pretty simple. <laughs> At least I, I think it's pretty simple. Like you may not be horribly simple, but let's go ahead and grab the crafter. I want the crafter to face on the bottom of the chute. And is it facing the right way? No, it is not. Also, I do have my scuba gear on, so I can turn it on. I wish that made the braking speed a lot faster. Oh, it's so, it's so painful. The brake. I, I don't know if I, um, uh, if I need to hold shift, does it change anything there? I don't know. I'll have to look from the other side. Let's take a look from here. There we go. Is it set up the proper way? No, it's not. Okay. So I believe I can use this as a wrench. It may work. <laughs> no, it doesn't. We're, we're going to have to use the actual wrench from the uh, refined storage mod itself. Please don't be too expensive on me. 
Wow, you are you are definitely too expensive. <laughs> now that I have this wrench, uh, we can move on, right? Okay, so yeah, I need this to be rotated because this is where it's actually gonna be sending the items. So there we go. Just clicked it. It is now officially rotated. The importer I want hooked to this chest. Oh, that rotates that, doesn't it? Interesting. And so I'm gonna hook the importer to that. Make sure I have some air. And importer should easily hook to this. Ooh, I even like that it's it's waterlogged. That's one thing I didn't know if it was going to, to properly waterlog or not. All right, and all of this wood, I mean, I guess I, I can hook it in here. Then just route it down the center line. And that should work. Am I even going into the center? I am not. Don't. Just ignore that. Ignore the fact that it's not going through the center. Okay, I think it goes like this. Perfect. Somewhat. It is a mess. I, I, I'm not going to doubt that, but it's hard to see underwater. Like, and that's not a that's not a pun. That's a, you know what? It is a pun. It's a horrible pun. So back at our pattern grid here. Now, one of the things that I have uh, that I should probably do is set up the uh, the pattern to do this. If we click here, we can go to alternatives. And if I scroll all the way down, there is a leaves alternative. I hit apply to that and then we'll set it. That way, this is going to be listed as an alternative here. That way, when we make this pattern, it should hopefully be able to pull all kinds of leaves and not just that one type um, of oak. Now, I am going to be working with spruce. I think that's what I kind of want to get going here because spruce is going to produce a log, a sapling, and leaves. I think that's all it produces. Um, so if I go with a spruce sapling in a botany pot, yeah, it only produces three things. So we only have to worry about three things, which is super nice. Um, so I want to be storing these leaves and uh, everything else um, I, I should get rid of. I should, but I, om I almost want to keep. Um, we'll see. I'm going to set this up, I believe, over here. You know, we could we could probably set up a couple of these. I was going to use the logistical sorters, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm like, and do I really want to get rid of everything? I don't think I do. So I know this may seem like a bit complicated because of all the stuff that I'm slowly working towards. But um, down here, I'm going to place a barrel. I have all these set up and I'm going to use the logistical pipes to just route everything into this central barrel here. That should hopefully work. And all these need to be set to extract. I have this set on items. There we go. And all these are going to be set to extract. Perfect. And everything that these produce should end up into this barrel down here. And uh, now I need to hook up an importer. Yeah, we can see all the items flowing down there. Perfect. And um, grab our cables. And we are going to hook an importer up to that. Yeah, I should be able to just hop down here. Hopefully we don't have the cable in the way. Perfect. Importer. Hook directly in. We are ready to go. Man, I am super ready to have, like, access to the above area. It's going to make life so much easier. Now, I should be able to set the crafter in here. And we still have another step. Because how are we going to automate the smeltery, right? Because I don't want to be pulling out, like, clay and throwing it in here. We need to filter that out. And uh, there is a very interesting way of doing that now with Tinkers that I absolutely love. So let's take a look at Tinkers. And now that we have Cobalt, we could we can actually do this. So there is a drain that is called the Seared Duct. Um, and this right here allows you to use a can, which we can make with copper, by the way. Um, let's see, can right here. Uh, and we can take this copper can and let's go ahead and just uh, set up a craft real quick. We can, well, you know what? I don't know if I want to do. Let's just do 25. Let's do leaves. Let's go ahead and just place it in ourselves. Um, do I have 25 leaves of any type? By the way, I should be getting these. Oh, I never fully connected this up, did I? Ah, well, this has to be connected here. There we go. 
So now that that's connected, everything should be running. By the way, our power consumption is going up a little bit. We're now at 59 RF per tick to be running this. Let's go ahead and grab some leaves. And all I have to do is just, uh, I, I can cast it out, I believe. Just like normal, like if I uh, go ahead and break this. And I place a table. I can go ahead and uh, use a faucet. Tinkers, let's grab our faucet here. And so long as we have the materials, we need tin. You guys are going to have this memorized by the time we're done. Tin and clay. Also, I need to get fully cl uh, full clay automation set up. Um, that's going to be a whole process in itself as well, because we need to get um, gravel sieving set up. So lots of stuff to work on. Um, and it's just going to be a process. Like, this is definitely a process. Okay. So we can put 25 of these in here. 25 leaves. Nothing should be automatically pulling out, by the way. Um, we don't have any of that set up just yet. Also, I have to get lava over here, which is another thing we're going to work on today. But once we have all this set up, I can place a can right here. Fill it with this. Now we can basically say, okay, Mr. Drain here. You're going to be replaced with a seared faucet. You can only pull out this particular fluid. Only this should work. So, we'll be able to place our pipe back. And that should be able to pull out. Okay, this <laughs> it was so weird. I had to break it and place it again. And now it's working. Okay, these pipes are going to be better anyways. So... Oh, man, what a weird, weird thing. So, yeah, I should be able to place this. I think six should get the job done, or at least I hope it gets the job done. Um, we can set that to extract now. Oops. Extract, and then I'm going to throw the upgrade in there. And then we should have all the items flowing out. However, we are going to end up with a little bit left over from making this bucket, which is going to end up in one of these, which is going to break the whole setup. So... Unfortunately, this one has to go and get replaced. And then I hope that that connection is still viable. Yes, it is. Okay. So there we go. We pretty much have overworldly matter, like basically automated. I think like we can definitely auto craft it now, right? We can, we can craft this and it, it, even if we make one, it's going to say, Hey, here's the amount of stuff available. Go ahead and start. And it's going to throw the items needed into this. And there we go. That was a weird number. 14 blocks. Oh, it's because it's automatically pulling it out that fast. So yeah, there we go. So now I want to easily transfer lava from uh, over the, the area that we're producing it over to here. And to do that... I probably want to use ender tanks and get into that, but first we actually need to get blaze rods and to get blaze rods. Well, we're going to have to take a stick and gold and cast out a rod. It is weird, but that's how it works. And um, we're also going to need blaze, which we get blaze powder from sifting. And I think it requires like, what is it? Four or something like that. How much of this is used? A hundred. So it's going to take five blaze powder, I think. Five blaze powder. Yeah, because it's only 20. But does this... Wait, do we need a multi-servo press in order to produce molten blaze? Or can we melt this in a smeltery? Wait, now I'm confused. So yeah, it, it requires this. Now, I believe the best way to do this is to do 50 in there. Let it... Yeah, let it smelt up 50. That way we can use a bucket to pull it out. Weird. Yeah, because 50 should get us exactly one bucket worth. And hopefully we can just pull that out. It is going a bit faster than I thought it was going to. There we go. Hey, there we have a Molten Blaze bucket. It's a quest complete. And we can take this, and we should be able to plop it in here. By the way, I need to make the cast. But I can throw it in there. And all we have to do is now cast this out. So yeah, I probably should set up automation over here again. So we only have five more C-Bucks left until I can unlock moving higher and going higher above ground. So 
We're getting to that point. I need to make a accumulator, an Oculus, an Oculus. Ah, oh, I always say this wrong. Oculus accumulator, and we can also make an orb, uh, a Boral extractor. Now this thing right here is actually going to be utilized later on for tree sap. So we are going to need all of these machines later on. Um, next step is also making the shining diamond block. So we need a diamond block. I know. Finally, we have a use for all these diamonds. Diamond block. And then we're also going to need to jump back into that heater. Um, let's see. It was called a... What was that called? It was called a furnace? I think I might actually have it... I have it stored somewhere. That's right. It was called a solar cooker. <laughs> so... The uh, solar cooker can be uh, used it to make this diamond block here. Um, as you can see, it is currently raining out, so I cannot do it just yet. Wow, that guy is running after me. But anyways, we have the solar cooker. Um, can, I can go ahead and get it placed back down here for right now. And uh, get these reflectors on it. Yikes. Yeah, see, we do still take damage. I'm ready for that to disappear. And not be a thing. Okay. So, all you have to do is put this in here, and that is going to cook up when the sun comes out. And, uh, well, once that happens, that'll get us another token, and we use that to enter into the Twilight Forest. However, there's not much we can do in the Twilight Forest yet. So while I'm waiting on that, I can go ahead and get our Ender Tank set up, and, uh, well, let's go ahead and get our Fluid Pipes. I have those setting here. And, uh, we can get this hooked up into this. So I'm going to have a pipe here, because right now lava is being used to produce all this obsidian. Um, but eventually we're going to stop that obsidian production. And this can be used to fill up this tank ever so slowly, but it is fast enough to be able to, uh, to utilize over here. And then we'll set this tank here, have that piped there, and that will keep this nice and full, which uh, will help with all of our automation. By the way, I did just auto-craft... 64 um, overworldly matter that is compressed. And look at that. It's already done. So, oh, that is so much easier. By the way, um, you can use this for processing, and I'm also using it for um, these other regular crafts. It will do both. Um, so if you're like me and you don't have a large crafter, you can get by with that. So we now should have this thing cooked up. Yes. So there's that completed. Now we need to open the portal to the Twilight Forest. However, like I said, I don't think we can utilize the Twilight Forest, but we can open the portal to it. And there we go. Oh, and we <laughs> we converted that guy. Okay, so let's jump in and uh, let's see what the Twilight Forest has to offer. Hopefully it's nothing like crazy. I've not been to the Twilight Forest in 116. Oh, so it is normal. Okay. But we are hit with an infinite mining fatigue, so that is the problem here, right? So we can't really do anything while we're in this dimension, even though we can look at things, maybe open chests, but we're kind of limited. So let's head back. Now that we've been here, we now should have enough coins and we have unlocked the prerequisite to be able to buy that scale. So if we go all the way down here to useful items, we can now buy this Reward. Oh boy. Submit, 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 and submit. And there we go. We now have the dragon scale. Oh. And we can equip it. And we can now go higher without having to worry about death from above. Oh. This is nice. Okay. Which means we can probably go see what this tower has to offer. So I have now equipped myself with full diamond armor and I am ready to go explore this tower. Now, this looks like towers that I remember like from like RL Craft and other mod packs like that, but I don't think this is the same tower. So I, I mean, I wonder if you could honestly get away with just going to the very top. I'm, I'm not going to try and cheese it. I'm going to try my best to actually go through this. And look at that. We can actually go up here now. Oh. Take all the loot. I think the the good the, the thing about this is oh man we don't have any blocks. Um, is 
probably trying to go up it fast, but as you can see, we're already encountering issues. Like with these steps, for example. And then a sword. Um, I'm gonna need to break more blocks. <laughs> for things like this. Okay. Um. Let's go quick. Quick. Oh! I can't place torches while it's in my offhand? Say what? Okay, so there's that armor. Oh, we have a skelly. Get out of here, skelly. Oh, we have a zombie. I think we should be fine, though. For the most part. We just have to be it quick. Ah! The skeletons. What is that? Oh! <gasps> Oh, thank goodness those don't spawn. I don't want that to spawn. I just gotta be quick. Okay, it was a couple of blocks of gold. Do you see? That's Vex. That's a Vex spawner. Excuse me. But I would prefer not to have Vex spawn on me. Ooh, we got a map to something? A buried... Wait, a buried dungeon map? What is that? I really hope... That is, uh, like a one-way ticket to us getting the one item that we could really use <laughs> around our base that would help us breathe underwater. Oh, that'd be really nice. Like the heart of the sea. Okay, so we just unlocked bread. That's a flame, riptide, fire protection. Very nice. So that was a, this was a pretty quick, um, pretty quick tower. Wouldn't say it was, it was too horrible. Yeah, torches are your, your, your best friend for stuff like this. 100%. Is there a chest locked in here? <gasps> Ooh, there is a double chest. Oh, wow. Lots of goodies. We gotta toss that all in here. So many goodies. And we have all these spawners that we could potentially use later on. I think we can box them up. Unless the dev has that turned off, that feature turned off. I don't know if that is turned off or not. But, hey, I mean, these are a lot of, a lot of spawners here. Yeah, I think that was it. I heard a pressure plate. All right. Oh boy, he's after us. <laughs> we should honestly really see what that treasure map has to offer though. Um, Like where on earth is this thing? It's near us. Wait, it's at our base? It's under our base? You're kidding me. I'm gonna go for it. Like it, I've gotta go for this. If it's directly under our base, I'm pretty sure I've seen there was, like, something under our base, but I couldn't quite tell what it was. Um, so. Lantern. I just need at least one sea lantern that I can place on the bottom of the ocean. Let's head down there and see... Yeah, there is a blip down here. There is something down there. So long as we can avoid creatures and occasionally refill our oxygen supply... This right here has to be what I've what I'm looking at. There's got to be something there. I have mining fatigue, right? No, that is the whole thing is mining fatigue. Because we're below a certain Y level, right? Y level 30. If I go just and just high enough, Okay, there's nothing there. So, interesting. I wonder, TNT's not gonna do anything. Huh, so technically I can't use that treasure map because it is buried underwater there. I just don't have access to it because of the mining fatigue. No! Oh, what a bummer. So I believe this is gonna be the thing that we work on, like, here soon marble for one thing needs to be our next goal uh to produce a, a stack of marble so we need marble in the first place so we need milk and one block of diorite inside this melt tree to get that um and then we also have concrete which apparently we need the fluid encapsulator in order to do that first so we have to make a fluid encapsulator and then this we need 64 Wither Skeleton Skulls, and 
that's going to be a challenge in itself. Um, and then the blaze wood. This requires the molten blaze. So it requires two blaze for one. And we need a bunch of this blaze wood. Which, of course, this blaze wood is going to be useful later on. So not too difficult to get this one either. Just another smeltery thing. Um, man. Whew. Some uh, some definite, definite rabbit holes going on here. What is this? Is this a dolphin? What are you doing, dolphin? So the reason we have to get through this section here is because it gives us vitamins, which having these vitamins are going to prevent that issue that we were having. Ah, <sighs> so many things to do. And like I said, I believe we're going to get them done next episode and we should be able to get vitamins, which is going to open up so much more. Um, also, I mean, at this point, we have the ability now to build above ground and I think elevators are going to become our best friend here soon. So I probably need to kill some more, uh, some more Endermen to get some more of those guys. But yeah, this surface is now ours and we can do whatever we want to it now, which is pretty awesome. So of course, as always, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that is going to go to Ryan V. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. And uh, guys, if you're interested in becoming a Patreon yourself, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. Also, while you're down there, be sure to join our Discord. I would love to see you there. I usually hang out in the public voice chat from time to time. So I would love to see your faces over there and chat with you. And guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll, of course, see you in the next episode. Don't forget that subscribe button. Hit that like button. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. As always, thanks for watching.